So, yeah, we've got a bunch of stuff, and we can maybe start uh, with something that has been sort of an undersold thing. <laughs> yes, we just need to touch upon this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. Maybe you can uh, because this is a problem you raise, right? No, no, no. My my question is simple. Yeah. Should I do testing for SSDFS or not? Because uh, no. finally, what no. we have? No. 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 The, the, the answer is pretty simple. Nobody is building CNS devices that are not a power of two. Yeah, but you have also the Sony UFS now, so there are some but patches SSD, in the Android SSD kernel, right? SSDFS is not targeted for UFS, as far as I know. I mean, you're not going to put this on an embed device or on a mobile device. And F2FS already has support for non-power of two for Sony UFS. That's what they wanted. They tried to put it upstream in Linux based on the patches that we tried uh, to put for several years. Yeah, is the replace. Is the no, no, I agree. No, I'm not, I'm not, no, 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 I'm not trying to open a door. I'm just saying it's already in the Android kernel. There is not going to be in Linux, at least that I'm aware of, so just drop it. I, I, I think it's a door that bleeds very much when you open it. So, <laughs> so, so, so what we're saying, it. unless you're doing stuff for Android devices, you if should not care Android. about non-power tools. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you, I'd say let's revisit this once we get an actual patch in this case that needs it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yep. And I'm, I'm speaking because we were the ones that pushed for this very, very hard in the past. We backed off. We, you know, we're not building these devices anymore. So, so unless somebody else is building them and want to speak up, I don't think there's a use case for it. Yeah, good. That was quick <laughs> and reasonably unpainful. <laughs> um, Oh, with, with Zone, like um, Zone GFS, are we going to have anything there we might want to? So for Zone, uh, uh, for Zone UFS, uh, it being SCSI, we actually uh, changed the ZBC standard to, to uh, cater to that case where your media is not uh, rotating rust and you, uh, you, you may not easily get a power of two alignment so you we introduced the gap zones and the, the the jump between zones so that we essentially created the zone capacity zone size and zone capacity for uh for uh, zbc as well to help ufs uh, flash media zone devices um, so that's all in the standards that gave a way forward to keep the zone size being power of two while uh carrying to the media and and uh alignment to non-power of two uh, arrays blocks. However, it turns out that after all that work, uh, BART came back uh, uh, telling us that Zone UFS device vendors, they don't like that approach because blah, their firmware, their device, their SOC or whatnot, it's too hard to change and do that. So they wanted a, a, a non-power of two zone size, which ZBC allows, but Linux doesn't. And Apparently, from uh, uh, higher information, that's all supported out of three, so do we don't really care. Yeah. This is one of the discussions it's pointless to go into. Some maintainers have made it clear that they're vehemently against. Some maintainers made it clear that they see a use case, yeah. and as soon as, as long as you don't have any reliable mechanism of concile these two stances by maintainers, we're stuck. So there's yeah. literally no point in us trying to persuade. We yeah. know exactly it will be vetoed, whatever we come up with. But that, at least we conclude that the, that's where we're stuck. And the users actually have a solution to put the patches in the kernel. And, yeah, and <laughs> and now we get along and say, oh, now we're perfectly fine with you doing your own stuff. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's how it goes sometimes, right? All right. I think we can move on, right? Please. Please. Okay. Please. So. <laughs> um, all right.
um, we can uh, look into something completely different, and that's um, testing. And we can look at benchmarking afterwards. Um, we do quite a lot of zone storage specific testing around the kernel, right? Uh, we have tests in libcbd and libcbc. Uh, pass through Okay, but yeah, okay, it's not kernel, okay, but it's okay, Linux. Um, it, how do you have like a state of that? Is that fairly complete? Uh, uh, things so, missing so, now, or so for libzbc, uh, that's uh, now with the new version six that has been released recently. It's a purely pass-through uh, library. So uh, think of it of the te it comes with a test suite, and that's more for device and HBA testing than the kernel test. Yes. It's okay. Just pass through all the way, so it by bypasses the kernel. Is there value in modifying block tests to not requiring to run on real hardware, but enabling libcbc to emulate hardware? No. No, please, no. <laughs> no. I'm, that was the question. If you say no, screw it. Okay, right, screw it. No, Can you run like QMU? Right? Whatsoever. Okay, no, okay. 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 Okay, oh. okay, 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 right. Good, okay, fine. Good, good, good. Won't, then, good. Yeah. Uh, and for SonFS, you also have testing, right? Yes. So is that well covered now? Do you, can, yes. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, I every time I get a regression, I try to to even uh, cover that with new test cases. It's, it's there's a fairly complete uh, set of uh, IO patterns being exercised. So it's not FS test because nothing works POSIX way with on FS. But uh, I think it's fairly complete now. Uh, there's extensive testing around uh, the error path. So we, in purpose, generate errors and then uh, bad state of the drive to, to uh, test the error pass. Uh, it's very complete. Block tests, we've been working with Shinshiro to, to see how we can uh, improve the, <coughs> the zoned uh, uh, group. So I think recently the, the patches that went in, we, we had uh, um, uh, one test case that has like 20 something test cases for uh, actually uh, testing zone block plugging, uh, zone right plugging, sorry, mm -hmm. um, uh, together with a with, uh, combination of uh, DM linear and uh, DM crypt uh, devices to test all, all that, that, uh, yeah. that plugging and uh, uh, zone up and emulation uh, down there. I think there's a lot more we could do. Um, like, we do have off tree some uh, test cases to test the entire um, um, zone state machine, for example, that we could easily add to block test as well. Uh, in the end, it's kind of uh, tricky because it's very the, the boundary between kernel test and device test is very blurry. Mm. Which one are you really testing? Because in yeah. the end, the, the, if you look at what the kernel does for zone block devices, it's not that much. It doesn't really care about, it doesn't track states, uh, uh, zone state, etc. In, in many cases, so. I mean, both devices and the stack needs to work right in the end, so it's yeah, I think but it's good that it, block test goal is not testing no. the device. No, so it's a, it's a nice side effect, right? So, yeah, it's it's we can talk about it, but I, I, I'm not sure where the 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 a nice boundary is. So yeah. Uh, so when, after adding zone right plugging, for example, we 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 did add the, the test cases for for exercising it to make to, to try to catch regressions. Uh, there is a few tests already that that exercise like report zone on some some IOs, etc. We could extend that a bit. Uh, we definitely can think about it um, in the context of the, the the refactoring that is going on with block tests. Uh, around uh, the uh, IO pattern that exercise uh, devices in, in different uh, uh, test groups that are can actually and should be uh, common between different uh, different device types and groups. So I think Daniel has been working with Shinshiro on 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 that. So in that context, yeah, probably we can extend that as well to uh, to to zone block devices. Uh, and for XFS tests, yeah, it's per 
per file system, so that's a different yeah, story. Yeah, but, but the, now we have, uh, or we, we have soon three file systems that support some block devices. So, I'm, so what I'm thinking is maybe we can make more generic tests that specific, like, are especially hard on, <laughs> on this type of file systems, like the one that I added, the 747, uh, that, that, yeah, really, really tortures the, uh, the garbage collection path. Um, I wanted to, I made it, it works on F2FS and it works on uh, the experimental XFS, but it turns out it was not fitting ButterFS properly because it had different requirements on how many zones needed to be open and like minimum size limits. So there's some work left there to make it generic enough for ButterFS as well. And it would be nice to add more of that, those things because uh, zone storage file system have to do a lot more than a normal file system when it comes to space management and so on. The big question is what is like the generic test suite for zone file systems? It's garbage collection is like one point. Um, like we have the generic test from you, there's two butterfly specific tests for garbage collection one but what else is there? So would it make sense to, to have more than that in, in the zoned group? Yeah, what, what we're thinking of adding to, ex, like for, ex, for the XFS testing is like making sure that garbage collection is not run if you have mounted read-only, for example. Like, uh, so, well, so. but then um, we should be careful here because each file system will have its own th uh, thoughts on how zones are yes. managed, especially how many zones should be kept open, need to be kept, uh, kept open, blah, 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 that's all gear. Yes. That's essentially up to the file system what it does with that. So we yes. really should not impose any boundaries, any tests. Oh, you should not keep that. Oh no, 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 nothing. So, uh, no, 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 no we, low level management. No, just no, making exactly. sure like logical so, operations work, but like just adding tests that are specifically hard. And we know that would stress that sort of implementation when you have to do reclaim and um, tricky corner cases for space management when you punch holes and. Yeah, 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 sure. And oh, no, pre-allocation and, and things like that. So probably, I mean, we'll continue to explore that with XFS and I hope, I mean, just to engage uh, ButterFS and FTFS guys more in seeing if this is like applicable for, for, the, for the, those and we make it generic then and then share the burden of the, the, the big question work. is wh wh where to draw the line between generic and XFS or ButterFS specific tests. So. Yeah. But it's just a discussion we can start having, right? So exactly. So for for me, the I'm not sure if it's just me, but the generic category is more like the correctness, the POSIX correctness test category, and the file system specific is like the regression testing, whatnot. Mm -hmm. And we can add new cut categories, right, for garbage collection, or I don't know. Yeah. Try to get yeah, but then. Okay. <laughs> so no, but, but this is, um, I, I tend to agree with Johannes here. Um, the thing is that while most tests for the file systems are actually generic because you're using generic, I, whatever, POSIX interface to trigger it, mm -hmm. the results of which are pretty much file system specific. So some test kits which is particularly hard on a particular file system might be a completely no-brainer for the other file system. Yes. So having this in a generic section is questionable. Because if it's no big deal for that particular file system, why is it even there? Mm -hmm. But I think there's more than just uh, the garbage collection thing that is. Uh, but you don't know. Mm, if no. you have a file system which, for, for whatever reason, doesn't even do garbage collection, oh. it's completely... No, no, then for, for that, no. But if we, I'm just saying that if we have three file systems that needs to do this yeah. common things, right, we probably find common yeah, they're, they're problem they're areas. And, like yeah. Zone group. yeah, yeah, zone group, yeah. Or, or just uh, um, per file, uh, per file system uh, um, test case, but based off some uh, generic code in yes. like library like code. Yeah, for, yeah we, for we shouldn't burn the rest of the mm -hmm. file system. The new tests take time to run. Just not we, not we a big deal it. as long as the test coverage improves. I yeah, mean, okay. whatever. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Um, yeah. That's. Uh, something I wanted to feed back on. And uh, another thing that I think we can cover, like share the burden enough is, let's see, I'll come to that. Data placement benchmarking. So testing is hard, but benchmarking is even harder because you not, never know if you got the right number, right? 
And uh, I think I spent more time benchmarking stuff than actually developing stuff over the last few years. Um, and I mean, we, for, for do we, some, do yeah. we have support for um, data placement in the target, in the Linux target driver? In the target? What? NVMe target. NVMe target. If he doesn't do Rust stuff. Oh, FTP patches, what's the state? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they are pretty close to, to getting in, right? <laughs> Let's get, say, I believe so. I, I don't think there's any blocker. It's, it's, so, yeah, you know, no, it's very close to, to getting in, right? It's very close to, I don't know, uh, you know, yeah. the request would be. Uh, you know, uh, you know, Christoph is, has been commenting today. I think the patches are, you know, being deployed at several places. So please review them, and then you know, uh, I believe it would be okay for everybody. And then you can reuse to do the. You know, I was going to ask you here: What do you mean by data placement benchmarking? Is it right amplification? Right, okay. Is it performance? All right, all right we can take a, can take a step back. So, like we do FTP, we do some storage for a purpose. Right, we want to expose more capacity, but we also put like the things you brought up in your presentation, um, less write amplification, right? But how 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 do we assess that? And it's very workload specific, and to be able to to do that, we have to run some workloads, and configuring those workloads and interpreting the results is like something that will take months to like really really understand, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking if we can automate those things, and pe people could just push a button run a <coughs> script and get a number saying yeah. that this is good or this is bad and you can compare different solutions instead of having to set up uh, all the testing yourself uh, yeah. and and like parsing the results um, because we we always compare yeah. different things right yeah so i think there are different things so for so we ended up using Right amplification as the metric we're after for what I explained in the morning because it's, it's, it's been used as a, as a proxy metric for, for latency and for the amount of garbage collection you do and, and, and bandwidth and all those things. Now, the issue with that is that you, in NVMe at least, do not have a standard way of, of looking at your right amplification, but you do have that on OCP. Yes. So OCP drives, you, you know, you can you know measure before, do your test, measure after, and mm, do for that. For FTP, you have that standardized. Oh, for yeah, FTP, uh, that's yeah. standardized. So, but uh, if you look at OCP, now, then you could do the same. You know, at the end of the day, every SSD has this. Is whether you want to to make uh, the register or the log page or whatever you're but it's doing a available right? is device specific, and and that's typically problematic. Um, but you know, OCP gives you a way. So if you decide to put this, use the same mechanism for other drives, you have a way to do that. Um, we've Exp you know, in the context, I, I'm, I'm switching gears, but yes, bear with me. In the context of the LBS work, w which has been a lot of uh, measuring and testing, and you know, Luis is, is very uh, thorough uh, using KDevOps, we, we ended up using a lot of uh, a tooling that uh, Danny, that I think is on the call now, has been doing for measuring, uh, you know, using VPF to measure a lot of the alignment and, and the IOs and all those things. And we thought, can we do something similar for write amplification? So Joel has a tool uh, out there that mm -hmm. uh, is open sourced. And we were thinking of maybe, maybe putting it into um, a, oh, I don't remember. Um, I don't remember the, the, the framework, but making it available mm -hmm. so, so that we can automate this uh, through KDevOps. Right. So that, that would be a possibility because you have like a, you know the baselines and then you can do like a, thousands of runs and then collect the data. and. That's a possibility if, if you think that would help yeah, you in I, the I right direction. Yeah, I think all the steps in like being able to have some common ground when it comes to testing and evaluation of different algorithms would be good. Um, I've added some simple write amplification metrics to FSPerf, which is a uh, framework that Meta uses to do, evaluate. So you can, for <coughs> zone file systems, it's pretty easy. You can just measure how many blocks that were written by the host. Because you know, you know that no extra blocks are going to be written by the device, right? Uh, for FTP and uh, for conventional devices, you have to pull out that data. But we could also um, make that plugin into FSPerf and get that metric. So we could have something there. And so then you can measure it, and then you have to define some workloads that we care about, right? So we've been like, CacheLib is one, uh, RocksDB is one, but those are just it would be able be good to evaluate more than just one or two workloads. 
uh, and also being able to automate them and maybe make it easy for more people to run them without not having domain specific knowledge about these workloads. So if it's something, if it's something that we can like, that's something we can work on in the future, right? So, oh, um, two things to that one. I mean, if RocksDB is such a great tool for testing, it should be possible to extract the I.O. pattern from that and put it into file, FIO. Would yes, it, yes. Um, wouldn't that be a good idea, like have an FIO profile? I have that on my to-do list to add it, let FIO. Right. I have, a, have something simple, I just have to do it. It's so. not super simple to mimic that write pattern, because... Uh, if we have a script, we have a script, that's fine. Yes. You could make a small Python script. I think so, that's what so easier than FIO. Yeah. So, so like a yeah. SST table, uh, key value database emulator. Something, whatever. Yeah. Um, Just to boil, boil rocks down, rocks DB down to something that has a similar write pattern. Yeah. And the other thing is that the is the write amplification just the amplification we see on the host side, or should we also take into account whatever the drive does internally, as we're not taking, as we're not properly looking at the erasure block size. Uh, I think we have to measure both, right? And when, so how when it's you, but how would you measure the drive internally? So in OCP, you have a, a, something similar to SMART, where you can look at the number of bytes written to the interface and number of bytes written to the media. Uh, and then you divide those. So. How do you know you're talking to an OCP drive? And yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I agree, but what, what at least what we are discussing is because I'm pretty sure that in every vendor has a way of doing this. What we're discussing is we can might as well use the same mechanism as OCP for all our drives because it makes things just like easier. Care to bring it up to the exactly? Care to bring it up to the NVM Express yeah. committee <laughs> yeah. that we will have some sort of whatever smart value, whatever from the NVM Express that we can read from I there. I agree with you, but think of one thing: there is one reason why it is in OCP and not in NVMe. And typically, you you bring to OCP the things that get pushed back on NVMe. So we can try to bring it again, but Good yeah, no, I, no, it's true. It's true. It's true. I mean, I think it's fair. Historically, the reason it's not in NVMe is because NVMe is supposed to be media agnostic. So, I mean, so the, when the discussions were in NVMe around this, this it wasn't included because it's media it's supposed to be media agnostic. Use persistent assist, uh, memory SSDs, so on, whatever hard drives SSDs, whatever it is. So, I mean, while it would have been nice, it's just not there for for that reason. Had not been there. Then someone came along and invented domains and endurance, and so, <laughs> and so suddenly there fi we finally have something where we actually could put in legally. In HD land, you have the device statistics stuff, and it's a log page you can go and read, and then you get the information. So, if we can do it on HD, you can do it on SSDs as well. <laughs> We're kind of stuck in that we can't easily make it mandatory. We can't do an NVMe 3.0 and say, yeah, but when it's optional, no one implements it unless someone asks for it. And, uh, and, and customers, typically, if you're selling like off the street, I mean, you're getting the bare minimum. You're not getting all the bells and whistles. You're not getting an OCP drive, for that matter, that doesn't go into the street. Uh, but a normal bare bone SSD does. Oh. <laughs> You're perfectly right, but would you do benchmarking on, a, on an out of, uh, on the street bought SSD? You'll burn out in no time. Um, no. <laughs> no, no, yeah, you won't buy them off the street. So now, point is, it doesn't need to be everywhere. It just needs to be on those things we're testing with. And remember, this is testing. And this is primarily functional testing that we did not mess up. So really, it needs to be everywhere. It just needs to be there where we test upon. That's perfectly sufficient. Exactly. At least, you know, from the way we see that is, you care about these things, as you say, on very particular drives. And you care about these things when you need to provide this end-to-end -end kind of, I don't want to call it guarantee, but, but end-to-end -end, uh, 
yes. contract that, that, that you do. So at least for us, when we test these things uh, thoroughly, we go to very specific devices and they say, you know, this device behaves this way because as Matthias says, you know, it, it, uh, it is made for this customer, there's a sense for these particular things and we all do the same thing in SKUs. So can we put this out there and let people play with it? 100% we're doing that. And then you, do you want to go and, and change the, uh, the log page or whatever you're using to test on your device? Then do it if you want. So, but for, for OCP, I am aware that there are, uh, you know, th there's this um, testing and validation framework that uh, uh, Meta has uh, put out and Google has contributed to that is about, a, a, you know, the, the whole left shift on, uh, on testing on OCP. And, you know, it's very probable that some of these tests end up being available for OCP drives and, and you know, they can be reusable by the rest of the community. Yeah, and weren't there some uh, effort in, uh, or efforts in SNEA to define how to do data placement and you know compare different implementations? You know, I, I'm not attending. Okay. The, the, I, I, the, the, I don't if, know. If I heard about some work in that direction, uh, to to sort of try to define which tests we should be running, comparing. The SNEA data placement group. Data placement. Did that then like? Uh, no, not, 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 not currently. Okay, so we, I mean we can go ahead and define our own tests in our community, right? And we can pull out the right ahead amplification out of the drives, just either using standards or specific hacks for for drives, right? If you want to run it on your own drive, there's always a way to get that data out. It's just not maybe not always available to everyone, right? Yeah. Could just get the, get it out open source and people can start using it. That's right, Matthias. But is write amplification the only um, yeah metric that we want to keep track of? Because, oh yeah. Um, well, um, that, that that was an important uh, like an interesting thing from from your talk, Javier, and that like write amplification is one thing, but like uh, latency or like maybe tail latencies, right? That would be interesting to s measure under just the different because people really care about that as well. It's not only. Uh, but that's easy to do. Yeah, but it would be a com good to have no, common methodology for I'm it. Not I'm saying there's no real problem. No, that, so. no, but it's. A, I think. It, I mean, maybe we agree on like it would be nice to have a set of common tests, so we not all have to reinvent this. So we could actually peer review tests and test it in different conditions, right? Because this is, we get this wrong all the time, right? And you Definite have to. conditions on SSDs. Pardon? How exactly are you going to introduce defined conditions on Oh, you don't SSD. have to define it. You just have to uh, uh, measure it. Re just buy a new one every time, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. I mean, you can... Yeah. Things change over the time, right? But uh, at least you can see it's slowly decreasing, and then you change your software, <laughs> and then you have a... I mean, you yeah. can. It, it's useful just to see what happens, right? See if you're starting to mess things up. Uh, or the drive is, is doing that. Okay, um, we have a bit of time left. Uh, see if we, I think I had one more topic. Uh, yes, FTP and zone storage. Um, something we started discussing in. Uh, so the, 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 I think the general comment is, I believe we're in pretty good shape and I think that everybody in this room at least should be interested in that. So, you know, please review the patches, see if something is missing. If we can merge something relatively soon, we can remove a lot of off tree stuff and then we can work on, on, on the on the abstracts. And I think that you know a lot of the discussion right now it is um, so the scarcity stuff is there. And then you have the temperatures, and then we try to reuse that. And uh, you know, there, there was some pushback because it is true that uh, FTP does not define the semantics, and, and I completely get that. But you, we're not going back to NVMe to, to, to standardize that now. That, that I can assure you. <laughs> so, so either we all off overload the temperatures, which is very simple because it gets uh, contained into the NVMe layer, and then you know we can live with that. Or we try to move it up the stack. That's the latest patches for Canton, what they're doing. But then we start touching file, not only NVMe. And then in the moment we start touching file, 
then you start having all these questions like what happens if I mount my file system on half of the block device or mm. if I use or, or the, you know end to end right and then you need, you, need, you need to start maintaining uh, bitmaps and all these things I think that's overly complicated no nobody's asking for that most people is going to use a, are going to use a block device and as I said you know in the talk we have patches to connect and the IOU ring a, a yeah, command pass, pass stuff, to, yeah. to just go to the per IO uh, a hint and you know that that's probably what most people is going to use so having some consensus not here because here is useless so having some consensus in the mailing list you know right yeah. in the mailing yeah, yeah. list <laughs> review the patches and then we get it merged and then we can all move on so <laughs> yeah it's just what I'm what I'm raising here is that it would be really good to have a common, um, well-defined semantics for, for um, databases, applications to rely on to try to get better performance out of their storage systems. But right? ba back to Javier's point, uh, it's really going to depend on how we can standardize with quote marks because it's yes. not a standard, or at least uh, agree on a, on a definition for... for uh, that are lifetime hints or temperature or whatever the name you want to, to call them. Yeah. Uh, if there is a set uh, of of these the, these hints, uh, uh, well defined with a uh, uh, well defined semantic for each of them, then sure we can go and map that to FTP or to Ex yeah. uh, some zone allocator using them to choose zones. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we need to know what what the and that's the up to the file means, system. Right? Yeah. No. Uh, we are talking about a problem at the API yes. API level system okay. call level yeah. uh, definition. But that's for the future. I think we, if you're adding an interface, we should think hard about the semantics, be, right? Be, be very, very careful here. So it is not the first time we did that, right? That's now the third attempt, yeah. fourth attempt, yeah. something along these areas. And um, we always have used the very same way. First, defining what will be done in the spec and then trying to figure out how on earth are you going to use this in, in the upper layers. And seeing that it's now the fourth attempt, which implies that the, th the three attempts previous didn't really work out, hmm. did it? Otherwise, we would be there now. And now we are going down the very same road in the hope that it works now. Why? That, that, you know, that's a very good question. The, the only... The only thing that I see different, and you know, I'm going to shoot myself on the foot here, is a lot of the previous approaches were vendor-based approaches where we tried to come with ideas to make the device uh, better in several ways, and you know, it didn't work out. This approach is hyperscale-based, so they are coming with drives they're buying and with use cases they are uh, mapping. So it's top-down and. We might not agree on how FDP turned out to be standardized, but that's how these hyperscalers wanted it, and that's how they're buying the devices. And I think the argument we're, we're putting here is the use case they define, that's what we're trying to cover now. The rest of the semantics of temperature and all that, A, for other use cases might be there, but why don't we cover what we can sell today and put in the street today? That, that's, and on top of that, I want to add, these patches are already deployed at three oh, enterprise okay. people, so we really want to remove them off three. So uh, I'm not doubt that it's <coughs> implemented and in use or something. Yeah, sure. Um, of, obviously they are, and yeah, sure, fine. Um, again, we just, I guess we are slightly the wrong audience here because we are not actually generating the data, we are just dealing with that. Mm. And it's those who generate the data who need to set the appropriate hints yes. such that the device but, can but make do with But this is classic that. chicken and egg. If you don't have so, it available, you're not going to get uh, yeah, adoption, exactly. so right? Essentially, so we should ask, say, a file system people to ask them, right, or can you deal with it? Can you do something sensible with it? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> this, this is not, you know, if you go to the use case these people are, are looking at, so, so one main use case, and Meta has been very open about this, is cash sleep. You know, the code is upstream, so you can use it, it goes through. Yeah, but, but that's all pass-through, right? You want you, you to buy, buy that's passing, they don't need a VFS in the Exactly, that. so yeah. that, that was pass-through because that's what we had at the moment, and you know, and these guys wanted to deploy it very quickly, but I believe that 
more things will happen in the future because there are other use cases. Most of what I know is user space file systems. That's what I mentioned before, that the block layer is the ones that are, that, that are going to get used. So at this moment in time, all this discussion we have in the kernel around file system being the owner, I, I think it's madness. Is is yeah, it would be very nice, but that's just spinning the wheels on a use case that is not existent. So essentially, what we rather should be looking at is to map the FTP semantics over into IOU ring that you can feed yeah, it from exactly, there, exactly. and also map it into Fuse. That Fuse has an interface to allow it to set these values. Right. And that would be actually more useful yeah. because then we write, okay, so this is the <coughs> interface to use it from your test environment, whatever, experimental files, and whatever you have, mm. use it, have fun. But, but we still whatever have to define. Like, we yeah. really don't care. And then we would have a sensible interface for them. And then we can talk with the next LSF yeah. to the file system folks saying, right, okay, this is the interface, see what you can do with that. But, but, but we need to put before, we, and you know, we have the patches for that, that's what I commented before, that, but we see that as a second uh, set of patches, because the first yeah, thing so is, to, first is, is to connect the block layer. Yeah, sure. mm. The only thing we care is the block layer. That's why the first set of patches that, that, uh, that were based on the temperatures reuse the whole infrastructure, we, you know, just to cover this. But now that we're getting into the weeds of, hey, now I'll create a new uh, FNCTL and then uh, creating a new way of doing things, then all these questions come. Hey, if the file system owns it, then the file system needs to do like a lot of stuff. And then you need to think about device mappers and blah, blah. Mm -hmm. That's like completely spinning the wheels. The, we only care about, at the moment, the use case is block devices for people either building a specific application, in this case, Castle, or a user space file system. What you do. The, the ones but, that I know of. Yes. So, but we really, I mean, we as the community, you really should look at, okay, how we make this work throughout the entire stack. There might be bits and pieces which are rather complicated, not really easy to deal with, so we can, we can leave it out. But we should definitely avoid getting to the situation where we had been with the whole integrity stuff, where it took us decades to come up with a user space <coughs> interface. Mm -hmm. which is really, really sad. So that's really not uh, we should be do, uh, going at, but rather should think of, right, a simple way, right, okay, say, like the fuse interface or IOU ring, right, okay, here IOU ring, that's the bits you need to set there, and then you have it. I think, you know, I think everybody here is willing to put the work, mm -hmm. and then, you know, we, we can do that, but I think, you, you mentioned, why are we in the third attempt? Mm -hmm. And then we touch slightly on the power of two stuff. And, you know, there is... Um, very polite way to tell you to F off by coming and saying, hey, can you do all this work? And then, you know, continue doing that and continue and then the next thing and, the next, and, and it never gets merged. And then your customer gets pits off and the technology gets dropped. And we've all seen the painful part of that here. So what I'm trying to say is now we have an opportunity to align on something that is actually being bought by people. Why don't we get this thing in? get that use case, and then we can continue doing the work. We all see once something it's in, it's much easier to build on top, and then we can actually, you know, I have no idea about file systems, and you know, I came to that conclusion. So why don't we put it in so that file system experts actually try to do the work? You know, when we were at LSF and talked to, to Shiner, he was like, you know, yes, separating metadata is not that easy because you can end up doing more damage than you're trying to help with. So, you know, please review the patches. And yeah. yeah. Um, but um, what I do, uh, what I'm not quite sure of, do they even map to zone devices? Can you, or rather, does it make sense to have so they the, the right hint, uh, I agree with, with uh, Javier. You, you need to, for the right hint, you need the block layer wired if you even want to consider file systems, because file yeah, systems so. will call into that. Uh, for zones, it would be, everything is there already. Uh, it's just an LBA-based hinting, wow. be, because you choose a zone, and then you just write or read that LBA. So it's a file system problem already. We are past the the... The, the stage that FTP is now try, trying to, to, to get to. So, and, and if we get the, the data temperature, lifetime, whatever it's called, uh, uh, well defined, then the file system can uh, either, if it's a zone file system, use 
zones to to um, implement that uh, that hint or FDP or whatever other yeah, uh, but, underlying device feature it, it yeah, is Yeah, and we should using. really like get in the next round of discussions, we should really get the FTFS okay. guys in the room because they've been working on this on and off for a long time, right? They have experience in this. Uh, so just see what they, because they have been going back and forth between different models of uh, lifetime hinting and data placement. So yeah, I probably need to bring them in. I, I like to understand why streams didn't take off because I know a lot of drives had that support for many years in the kernel, and the support we, I mean, and the way I see it with FTP, the way it's been implemented in the kernel isn't that because it'll provide the same simple. benefits as. It's very simple. Yes, but then why are we discussing FTP? Okay. But then why why does this not apply to FTP then? So streams. Uh, Semantic of streams was ill defined, and there was too 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 much vari uh, uh, variability between devices between vendors. The API okay was defined, but the result of using it uh, uh, on the on the device was just. What makes FTP different? I think it's better defined. I'm I'm not entirely sure. I mean, the the expert is there. Don't ask me. <laughs> but I I know streams failed because of that. First, you know, uh, streams came at a time where we were building the whole open channel stuff and it collided very much head to head with it. That, you know, the politics side of streams w was very important. Many people believed that the open channel way was the way, not the stream, so many vendors ignored that. Then second, the, on streams, people struggle a lot in getting uh, alignment on the, on the sizes of what today we call reclaim unit. And that was also very painful uh, for, for people deploying that. And we tried to learn from those mistakes. And, and believe me, we, we still do streams. So, so we tried to learn from those mistakes. And now having the sizes help, having the feedback loop helps. So it's an extension to, you can see it as an extension to streams, yeah. But I think it addresses the concerns of the people that were actually deploying streams at scale. Uh, but adding these placement IDs or hints uh, is basically streams, right? And in interface, user is the same. It's the same. But they're also like more lower level control, right? You can have more control of the reclaim units and so on. Yeah. Is, is that something that you consider adding infrastructure into the kernel for? W what do you mean by that? Like knowing more about the sizes of the reclaim units and it, it is see where, where they are. And, it know. is. You know, know where you are because, you know, in FTP, it's not about, you, you don't have like a right pointer where you are. You have the log page. It's, it's a different yes, mechanism. But is, is that something yeah, you're considering there? making available to like file systems, or is that just passed through? So, uh, from my perspective, you know, you have the log page, so you can query the log page, and then you can look into that. Typically, that's made more as a control plane uh, kind of thing. So, when, when we talk to customers, and then they say, "Why don't we make this like an IO command and look at it?" and, and the people said, "We cannot use real-time statistics on what you're doing because it's way too complex." So, yes. the, so the way people are, are looking at it is. We're going to deploy this, run it in the workload for several months, and then uh, we're going to look on the side and say, hey, how good are we aligning? That, so, that's so it's just it. for analytics. It's nothing that you will use in real time it, No, because the real time is, is very difficult to measure. Like, how well aligned are you in real time? <laughs> So we, we, we will like stop, stop at just providing hints in form files. You have and so hints, and then you have the, uh, the um, uh, contractual guarantee that your the allocation, the DSM command, is going to be served, which in normal, you know, I know in an enterprise drive, you typically guarantee that when in NVMe is advisory. So you don't need to do, to, to do the discard uh, or the DSM command deallocate. Mm -hmm. On FDP, you will uh, honor the DSM command deallocate because it will effectively like an erase, but of the LBA range. And if you follow those rules, then you can, with a high level of confidence, remove the garbage collection on the device. And then you go and test it on the side. Mm. Because keep in mind, this is all about backwards compatibility. A lot of these people say, I do not have the engineering resources to, to fully port my application or my you know, application. To, to FTP, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of the work, whatever I can, and then I'll do a little bit later, but I can still buy the drive today. And that is driving a lot of the early adoption. Hmm. That was the same thing. Buy the drive, you can attach to it over time. 
Yeah, but, but timing is important. At, at the time, streams did not catch, and, and at the time, streams was something that, uh, you know, I was not part of Samsung, but it was something that a, a guy called Ye Yu uh, published on and put in a drive, and nobody cared. And at the time, there was no support for, proper support for Linux until Jens put it in. Now we're in a different world. I think I'm not disputing whether it's technology. I'm, I'm just saying... Take the mic so everyone here. The community having a hard time because they've been through this. There's only one person having a hard time. I don't see anybody in the community complaining. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. Maybe yeah, we have a bit of time left. Is it anything else we should bring up today before we round up? Are we all all good? Wanna head out to the evening event? Um all right, um, I think we can just wrap up. And uh, I'd like to thank you, thank you guys for coming and for all the good discussions.